please welcome Hebrew Senior Life's Medical Director of the Diana and Sydney Woke Center for Memory Health and Senior Scientist at the Hinda and Arthur Marcus Institute for Aging Research, Dr. Alvaro Pasqualioni. Hebrew Senior Life is a unique institution. It has a clear mission to empower older adults to define their life goals and support them in their efforts to achieve them. In order to do that, HSL brings together three unique ingredients. Inclusive, innovative living communities for seniors at different levels of need, multidisciplinary, cutting-edge medical services that are dedicated to promote the health and well-being of older adults, and a world-class research institute, the Hinda and Arthur Marcus Institute, that is dedicated to aging research. As a cognitive neurologist, that is not just unique, that is transformative. It is transformative because it enables me to pursue the amazing opportunity of helping people today while contributing to advancing scientific knowledge. That's what brought me here, and I'm excited to be now part of Hebrew Senior Life. I've been at Harvard, where I'm a professor of neurology for the past 20 years. I'm now a senior scientist at the Marcus Institute and the medical director of the Center for Memory Health. In older adults, brain diseases are already the greatest cause of disability, greater than cardiovascular diseases and cancer combined. The risk of brain diseases continues to increase as we age. However, we can do something about it because it turns out that aging is not an obligatory cause of brain diseases. Think of Alzheimer's disease, something we all fear. It turns out one in every four people with Alzheimer's disease never develops the symptoms of dementia. They can live a full life without the impact of Alzheimer's disease and dementia. Are they lucky? Or is there something we can learn from them to benefit all of us? What we've come to realize is that there are things we can learn from these unique individuals because all of us have the capability of helping our brain be healthier and be able to cope with disease in the unlikely, unlucky event that we develop disease. So if we're healthy, we can help each other to sustain brain health to prevent disease. If we have an illness, we can address function and improve outcomes and improve well-being, coping better with the disease. That's what we do at the Center for Memory Health, and I want to share with you a little bit how we go about doing that. Now, the first thing that is important to realize in, in, in approaching this challenge is, is that a healthy brain is not a brain that doesn't have an illness. It's a brain that functions well in the face of an illness. But the second thing is that a healthy brain is not a young brain. A healthy brain is a brain that functions well for whatever age you have. I have three children. I love my children. I don't want their brains. I try to help them cope with the challenges that are associated with their age. And I was there and got over it. Aging means that the brain changes, and that's a good thing. It doesn't mean that you become less able to do something. It means that you do it in a different way. When people say, well, my memory is not as good because I'm old, well, you can tell that to your loved one, but don't give it to me. That's not an excuse I will buy, because there is no reason to have poor cognitive ability simply because you're old. What we know about the brain is that if you bear with my sketching, is that when we're young, there are certain connections very close to each other that work particularly well and are very rich and strong. We can sense where our leg is and we can move it and therefore we can kick a ball and we learn to kick balls, we need to learn to move around, we need to learn to reach out for things. We can see a shape, a long thing, and then we can see its color and we connect those two and we all of a sudden became able to learn something is a banana. It's wonderful. We are a machine of learning little things. But when we're older, we develop longer range connections in the brain. Connections that connect things that 
normally you wouldn't expect to be connected and all of a sudden you see that long thing that is yellow and you not only think of banana and thanks to that remember that wonderful time when your mother baked a banana cake and you enjoyed the smell and your water f fills up in your mouth but you also remember that a long yellow thing was floating over a scene in a theater the first time you went to listen to the Beatles and how spectacular that time was. And, and those abilities to relate things that are so far from each other, that's a substrate of wisdom. That's what we need healthy, vibrant, older adults in our society for, to be able to enrich us and benefit our children, their grandchildren. Now, when you look carefully at those long connections in the brain, it becomes clear how challenging this is because what it means is that each brain cell sends a very long connection, a very long road to the next brain cell far away and makes a specific connection to that brain cell that we call synapse. What that means is that this brain cell has to send information at right time in the right precise manner to reach all the way down here and that's difficult that is knowing that you have highways but optimizing how the traffic flows in those highways now, the remarkable thing is that thanks to the advances in neuroscience we now have the way to measure not just how you are functioning but how this transport of information, how this flow of information goes. We can identify how healthy your brain is in its capacity. And with that, we can not only characterize it, but help it. We can improve the way information flows in the brain. Let me remind you of the example I was giving of the banana. That's what we call autobiographic memory. It triggers a recall of who I was in the past. And that's the building block of who we are. It's our self representation that is anchored by those memories. That capacity to remember yourself in the past is essential and is lost in the setting of dementia. That's what we fear, that we will no longer be ourselves. But thanks to this type of approaches, we can improve the brain function and help individuals remain themselves for as long as they might live. If I may make it personal for a second, my mother passed away younger than, she, than I am now, and she passed away of cancer, but she sat with me towards the end of her life and told me how fortunate she felt she was because she was herself for my, me and my sister and our kids. Uh, to remember her as herself. That's what we all want. We want to be ourselves for as long as we can live. That's what we try to do in the Center for Memory Health. But in order to do that, we need support because cutting edge research, translating that to clinical practice requires philanthropy, requires support. And we thank you for your consideration and your help.